All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. Yeah, cause this is my moment. It is Jay Hill's moment as the new associate head coach and defensive coordinator. What's Trending presented by Bodyguards, protection for a life worth living. Learn more at bodyguards.com. The new associate head coach in place, Kelly Papinga joining him. We'll start obviously with the huge story, and that is Jay Hill, a Utah man Jay! and most recently a Weber State head coach joining BYU and Kalani Satake. What are your initial thoughts on the hire of Jay Hill as the new defensive coordinator? Great hire. Uh, I've wanted Jay Hill on the staff for a while now. And uh, if you can win at Weber State and in Ogden, you, you are certainly a great coach because he has done amazing things there. And Jay Hill, uh, as a former Ute, looks great in blue. I just first off want to say that. He looks amazing in blue. I love this Photoshop. I'm stoked about this hire. Uh, because here is one of the most talented coaches in the West, a guy that, whose name surfaces for every uh, group of five coaching opportunity that gets out there. He's bided his time, waited for the right opportunity, won and done an amazing job at Weber State over the years. Uh, nine years there, they've become a top ten program, four Big Sky titles, six FCF playoff appearances, ten wins in four of the last five, ranked as high as number two. They beat Utah State by 28 this year in Logan. BYU didn't do that in Provo. No. Like, you, Two teams held Utah State to seven points, Alabama and Weber State. How about that? <laughs> Jay Hill is a guy who has FBS head coaching material, and that's what you want as one of your assistant head coaches and uh, a, certainly a capable replacement for Ed Lamb, who did a nice job with SU and had one big sky title. Jay comes in with four. Jay was on the staff, as you mentioned, in headlines with Kalani for nine years. They know each other very well. Like, Jay, Jay, listen, Jay is a Ute, but now he's a Coug. Like, he's the other Kalani, if you will, um, coming to this end of it. And he provides stability. He provides uh, recruiting acumen, uh, an incredible defensive mind. He called the plays as the D.C. at Weber State. Yes. And they were top 10, top 20 every year. I mean, for the like. last six seasons until the most recent season, he was the defensive coordinator. There. They were, he was great there. Former Ricks guy, uh, former cornerback that way. That way. He, he smartly, uh, whether it happens this way or not, waits until BYU is a Power 5 team. He goes from FCS to P5. I mean, that's quite the jump. Obviously, BYU in transition, interesting there. Um, I, I'm very excited about it. I, I think what he's done at Weber State, and, and for those outside of Utah, you might be like, what's the big deal from grabbing an FCS coach? He was one of the best FCS coaches, and he's a guy that's been at Utah for a long time. He was there in the Pac-12 with Utah as an assistant, for the first three seasons. Yes, he was there. Then during... he went to Weber State. He was with Kalani yes. for a long time. I mean, he enjoyed Utah's initial BCS run in 2004, and then when they won the Sugar Bowl in 2008, and the move into the Pac-12. You want to talk about a guy that has a resume that is picture perfect to help BYU make the jump from independence to a Power Five conference? He's been through it just like Kalani has, as you pointed out. And I maybe, love that. And maybe he was waiting for the Utah job, maybe. Um, with Kyle Whittingham, because he played at Utah. That, that would be a rational thought there. Opportunity knocks in Provo. But, but I, who knows how long uh, Kyle's going to be there. And I, I think, honestly, um, Utah has become so big that maybe grabbing an FCS coach isn't the move they would go with, no matter how good Jay is. Does that make sense? They, they're, uh, they're a title contender now in the top ten the last couple of years at least. So I think it's great. I, I think this is about as good of a hire as BYU could realistically make. Yes. Everybody's saying, oh, this is a home run hire. It's better than a home run hire. It's a grand slam hire. It's hitting for the cycle hire. It is fantastic. It could not be better for BYU in my opinion because of the credentials you just pointed out. And he comes as an accountability coach. Everybody loves Kalani. Kalani is the player's coach. He is the nicest guy. Sometimes probably to a fault. Love Kalani. He's all about love and learn. Jay brings in accountability factor. And not because Jay isn't loved or won't be beloved. All his Weaver State players love Ultimate him. respect is what I'm talking about. I yep. mean, they, he will bring just an air of confidence in a guy that's going to get the most from his players, almost like a Bronco Mendenhall uh, effect. Where it's or like, that direction. He walks into the room and you're like, oh, Coach Hill is here. 
you feel his presence in the room. And I love that. I love that he's going to bring that to BYU's football room with the accountability. He's worth every bit of the money. I know there are some numbers floating out there. We don't get the official numbers. It's but BYU, what, they don't have but whatever it is, and if it's as high as some Thank of the reports goodness, are BYU saying. Thank doesn't put out what employees no. make here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there would be a mutiny and it would help us. <laughs> I kid. But he's worth the money. He's worth every penny. And, yeah, he's a Rick's college guy, so just maybe, Jerem. Hey, the spirit he's of coming, Rick's is He's still coming alive. home in a way. He's coming he's home. He's coming home in a way. And I love the social media receipts that have been kept on this. When the news first started to leak out that maybe Jay Hill was interested in coming to BYU, and I think this was just the hearts of Utah football fans saying, no, he would never do this. He would never do that after everything he gave to Utah. And they've been a Utah family. Oh, my goodness. Like, <laughs> it, is, it is a lot of fun to see what's happening now with this becoming a reality. Like, it's, it's almost unbelievable. And uh, our friend on uh, Twitter, at, it, it's Chappie. Like, he's a big social media presence. He's a huge Weber State Lives fan. Lives in Ogden, I think. Yeah, this morning he was like, oh, man, I don't know how to feel because he's a BYU <laughs> fan as well. He's losing his head coach, but he's going to BYU. So he's like, it's good and terrible at the same time. Yeah. This is such a great move for BYU. And I love that I'm Kalani sorry. and Jay are reunited now. And we have a, a scenario where there are essentially two head coaches in the building. Helping BYU go the to the coach. Power 5 Big 12 That's scenario. what you want. Like, if, if you know, uh, Kalani ever got sick, couldn't make game for whatever, there's no problem. That guy is ready to go. Like, you, you want um, capable coaches. And they certainly have them. Now, I do fear that Weber State would want a Fessy Sataki as the head coach because I would love Fessy to still be here. Fessy They'd be is, crazy not to call him. Fessy's not going to be here forever, and Fessy's awesome. Okay, a couple other notes here. Um, I'll Venmo Jay Hill 500 bucks if he opens the press conference with the following statement. These have to be his first words. Can't say anything else. Got to say this. <laughs> Drop eight is here to stay. <laughs> I'll Venmo you, Jay Hill, 500 bucks if you open the press with this. Also, I think the hierarchy of highest-paid employees of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has been shaken up today. Oh, boy. There Number one go. is Kalani Sitake. Number two, I believe, is Mark Pope. <laughs> Number three is probably Jay Hill. Number four is Aaron Roderick. And 10,786 is you and I. <laughs> Here we are. Uh, 